All right, it's time. We've got that new set of upcoming changes. And let me tell you, they're actually pretty massive. There are a ton of changes and I really mean it. So make sure to stay tuned because we're going to let you guys know what's going down next patch. My name is Irene and I'll be letting you guys know what you should be expecting to see on patch 10.25. Remember though that any of these changes could be pulled. In general, we usually see them make it through, but just don't be surprised if the final product is slightly different. Also, I do want to let you guys know that we've started a documentary channel. So if you're interested in esports as a whole, make sure to check out the link in the description. For our question of the day, what's your favorite part of all the preseason changes and your least favorite? Personally, I don't like that they changed cooldown reduction. I get that ability haste was a necessary change, but it also feels like it complicates things for us as players. For one thing, the math is a lot harder than before, and I didn't play League of Legends to go to school. In fact, I was playing League of Legends to get away from school. Regardless, it's my least favorite, but I'm not saying it should be reverted. My favorite part, however, are all the new items. They're fresh, they're fun, and they make every game a little bit spicy, save for some. Let me know your answers in the comments below. Now, let's hop into the video. Starting things off, let's talk about the cosmetic additions to the shop. For skins, we've got two sets of skins being released, the Battle Queen line and some additional Elderwood ones. Battle Queen Diana, Janna, Katarina, Kiana, and a prestige edition of the Diana skin will be available next patch. For the Elderwood skins, we've got Elderwood Azir, Ivern, Orn, Rakan, and Zaya being added. Make sure to check them out, because like always, the skins look great. Next up, let's run through the balance changes. Next patch marks the release of Rel, so make sure to be prepared for her and do some reading up. We'll be releasing more content about her soon, but also have a video covering her abilities. If you haven't heard about her, check out our video where we cover what you need to know about her. To kick it off, let's talk about nerfs to items. All right, so tanks have been a problem these past couple patches. They felt a little too powerful. <coughs> And while some have been nerfed, most have been left untouched. The source of this power, none other than the tank mythic item, of course. Sunfire Aegis especially proved to be an absolutely busted item on release, and its counterparts only a little bit weaker. All three tank mythic items, namely Sunfire Aegis, Frostfire Gauntlet, and Turbo Chem Tank, are all receiving nerfs this coming patch. The first nerf comes as a universal nerf to these items, as Bomby Cinder is having its price increased from 1000 to 1100. This will slow down the scaling just a little bit in the early game, as players will need a little more gold to access the Immolate effect. Sunfire Aegis's health is being reduced from 450 to 350. Frostfire Gauntlet's slow effect radius is being reduced from 275 to 250. And Turbo Chem Tank's supercharged slow duration is being lowered from 2 to 1.5. These are all unique nerfs, but surprisingly, the damage will stay in place. Seeker's Arm Guard has also been nerfed. After killing 30 minions, you'll gain the full effect from the passive, gaining a bonus 30 armor. With it, the item is actually worth 1700 gold in stats. Towards the later part of the early game, headed into the mid game, having a 700 gold item take up a slot is kind of insane. For how little you invest, you get so much out of it. It's basically a better chain vest for only 100 more gold, and that's absolutely absurd. Compared to a chain vest which only grants 40 armor, it's clear who the winner is here. It's the price of a basic component now, but still provides the stats of an epic item. Because it's so powerful, Riot has decided to nerf it, lowering the AP from 30 to 20 next patch. It'll be just a little bit less cost efficient now, but will remain a solid purchase when you need early armor. The Collector will also be nerfed. This item provides a ton of different stats and is a great item to splash into builds that are already rich in damage modifiers. It was actually stronger than intended, and thus the execute effect will now only work on champions rather than all enemies. While it'll still accomplish the same goal as before, the item will now miss out on a bit of random strength that it didn't need. Once again, Eclipse will be nerfed, but this time it's a little more tame. This nerf will only affect ranged champions as Eclipse was leading to some off-meta builds Riot wasn't happy about. The shield value for ranged champions is being reduced from 100 plus 30% bonus AD to 75 plus 20% bonus AD. Too many marksmen have been opting for lethality builds, and while it's fine to have diversity, Eclipse was acting as an unhealthy enabler. With this nerf, you should still be able to go for lethality as a ranged champion, but will end up a little squishier than before. For a defensive option, Immortal Shield Bow is supposed to be the premier choice, and Eclipse has been too effective of an alternative option. Duskblade of Drakthar is also getting nerfed for ranged champions only. The slow will only apply for melee champions, and this will further discourage marksmen from using lethality-based builds. 
The biggest perpetrator here is Jin, and with both these items nerfed, we might see him buy other mythic items more often. Recently, mages have started building Muramana because it now applies its damage on spells as well. It's an AD item, Riot isn't cool with it, so now it's getting a change. The bonus damage will only apply on spells that deal physical damage. Actually a pretty easy fix, and AP champions will now need to stick with Archangel's Staff if they want a tier item. With the nerfs covered, we can talk about item buffs next. Gale Force is first on the list for Marksman item buffs. We've got a ton of those by the way, so sit tight. This item was introduced to provide extra mobility for Marksman players. With it, the possibilities open up significantly, and there are plenty of moments that they can outplay their opponents with it. However, it's been underperforming and is getting buffed next patch. The AD is going up from 55 to 60, while the active cooldown is being reduced from 90 to 60. 30 seconds off that active cooldown is a giant buff, and I expect more players to build it, especially in higher elo. 60 seconds is a much more forgiving cooldown, and you'll basically have it ready for every team fight. While there were other mythic item buffs for Marksman, it appears that they've been pulled. This is likely because a ton of other items are being buffed, and Gale Force was the one that needed a buff the most. Now onto other items. We've got buffs for crit items. Zeal, Phantom Dancer, and Rapid Fire Cannon are going to see price reductions next patch. Zeal's price is being lowered from 1200 to 1050 while Phantom Dancer and Rapid Fire Cannon will cost 200 less, leaving them for sale at 2,500 gold. These are nice buffs. Marksman will scale faster as a result, and the build up to Zeal for some extra movement speed is going to be a lot more convenient. Infinity Edge is also getting a change to make it a lot easier to purchase. For times when you just need more damage, Infinity Edge could be a good purchase, but it often isn't because you need a lot of other items built first to make it efficient. The buff will now be flat, with the condition that you need to have 60% crit chance already. Thus, you'll gain an immediate 35% crit damage buff as long as you break this threshold. Meaning, it'll be viable to build an Infinity Edge as a third item. This also means that you won't have to opt into a 100% crit build anymore, and can tech in other items as needed. The next four items are receiving much simpler changes, so we'll go through them together. Essence Reaver's attack damage is being buffed from 50 to 55, Mortal Reminder's cost is down from 2700 to 2500, Lord Dominic's Regards AD up from 30 to 35, and Scimitar's cost up 100, but its AD also went up from 30 to 40. These are more situational items, and as a result of these various changes, most builds should come cheaper and also provide more AD than before. We want to look forward to our item purchases and getting more stats or having to pay less makes each item power spike that much more valuable. That's it for the Marksman items, now we've got support items to talk about, beginning with Bandle Glass Mirror. Compared to other epic items, it's felt pretty lackluster. Completing this item doesn't feel like much of a spike at all, and while it's not getting any stat changes, it'll cost 100 gold less next patch, so at least you'll have an easier time cleaning up your inventory. While you don't get much of a boost for finishing Bandle Glass Mirror, it's an easy way to access 10 ability haste, and this added convenience is definitely something supports will be thankful for, since they're usually living off scraps anyway. A discount means that much more when you have so little spending to begin with. Now onto mythic items. Imperial Mandate, Moonstone Renewer, Shirelia's Battle Song, and Locket of the Iron Solari are all getting buffed. Well, sort of. They're all going to end up slightly weaker than before, with the exception of Mandate. It's worth it, just trust us. Hitting your mythic item power spike earlier is a huge deal, so even a small nerf is worth it in the grand scheme of things. All these items will cost 200 less gold, leaving them at a price point of 2500 gold. Imperial Mandate is getting an adjustment. Rather than dealing 60 to 100 on its initial proc, it'll deal 36 to 60. However, the ally proc damage is being increased from 60 to 100 to now being 90 to 150. Situationally, it's a buff, while at other times, it's a nerf. Still, it's cheaper, so you have to take that into consideration. Moonstone Renewer's initial heal is going up from 60 to 90 to 70 to 100, but will only scale up by 12.5% per second in combat from 25%. This also means that you'll cap at a 50% bonus. Shrelia's Battle Song bonus damage buff is being reduced from 40 to 60 to now being 35 to 55 and Locket of the Iron Solari Shield is being lowered from 250 to 420 to 230 to 385. Next up is Zeke's Convergence. The stats are being reduced, but a lot more power is being pushed into its effect. For stats, its health is going down from 300 to 250, and armor from 30 to 25. 
In return, the mark duration is doubling from 4 to 8 seconds, and the damage is going up from 25 to 50 to 35 to 70. I think the doubled duration is an insane buff, and the loss of some stats is definitely worth it. While yes, you as a support are going to end up a little bit weaker, your partner is going to have a much longer window of opportunity to work with and also deal more damage during it. So, you know, when your lane partner is a bit slower to react, you just got four more seconds to work with. That can't be that bad, right? D don't quote me on it though, there's always lag and uh, unlucky games, so. Ardent Sensor and Staff of Flowing Water are subject to a minor buff next patch as well. The items will both build out of Amplifying Tome rather than Blasting Wand. While the total cost remains unchanged, this once again helps out supports by allowing them to pick up cheaper upgrades along the way to their completed items. It's not always that easy to base with enough for a Blasting Wand, but enough for an Amplifying Tome is almost always doable. If you watched our patch preview the other day, the Luden's Tempest change remains the exact same. It'll provide 10 more Ability Haste, but also 4 less Magic Penetration. Thus, it now has 20 Ability Haste and 6 Magic Pen. For Spell Slingers that can't afford any downtime, this is going to end up being a huge buff. Everfrost is also getting the same treatment. It'll also have its ability haste increased by 10. Mages in general will now have more ability haste when choosing one of these two mythic items. Especially because ultimate abilities tend to have a very long cooldown, this is a very hefty buff. That's it for all the item changes, so let's talk about champion changes next. Let's start with the top lane. So first up, the nerfs to Kale this patch weren't enough. That's why next patch she's getting a real nerf. It was a good try, hitting her items and then giving her a small nerf, but she's still OP. And now, she's getting some serious attention as her base magic resistance is being lowered from 34 to 30. And her E passive on hit AP ratio is also being reduced from 25 to 20. These nerfs should make it slightly easier to bully out Kale and also hit her mid lane win rate as she's doing actually pretty well there as well. But all in all, Kale is still insane and this probably won't be enough either. Pantheon Top is also receiving a buff. His base movement speed is being reduced from 355 to 345. But his Q's cooldown is being reduced by 2 seconds at all ranks, while the mana cost is also being reduced from 40 to 30. It'll no longer slow when empowered, however. His W's base damage is going up significantly from 60 to 140 to 60 to 260, and his E will no longer block turret shots. However, the Retreat movement penalty is being lowered from 50% to 25%. Empowering his E no longer extends the duration, but instead grants him 60% movement speed for one second when he slams his shield. Finally, the Spear that drops from his ultimate will slow for 50% and also apply an unempowered Spear's worth of damage around it. These changes should heavily discourage players from playing him as a support and push him into solo lanes once again. His W literally got 120 more damage, so if anything, it'll encourage players to either max W early, or at least invest in farming up some experience to get those ability points a little bit faster. Aurelia has been underperforming in the preseason, and she's receiving some buffs to help her acclimate. Her base AD is going up from 63 to 65, while her Q cooldown is being reduced from 12 to 8 to 11 to 7. The cooldown buff is a nice buff as the replacement of cooldown reduction with ability haste has definitely done some damage to her mobility. And as far as I know, having your base damage go up never hurt a Trinity Force user, ever. While Mordekaiser was pretty strong at the start of the season, that was because Riftmaker was strong, not him. His Q's isolation bonus is going up from 80 to 40% to being 30 to 50% meaning that he'll have an easier time in 1v1s as well as when he's having a showdown in his ultimate's death realm. Nasus has been struggling in the more aggressive, fast-paced nature of the game right now, and is thus receiving a buff to his Q. The cooldown is being reduced by half a second at all ranks. This should help bring him back to a similar power level as before, since ability haste is weaker than cooldown reduction was last season. That's it for top laners, let's run through the jungle next. Kane has been an absolute monster, and is seeing a decent list of changes next patch. His base armor is being reduced from 38 to 35, while his Q's base damage is going down from 75 to 155 to 65 to 145. Finally, his Q's cooldown is going up from 6 to 4 seconds to 7 to 5 seconds. The cooldown nerf is an especially big one, but put all of those together and Kane will definitely feel weaker next patch. He'll likely still remain an extremely powerful pick, but with that nerf to his Q alone, Kane is definitely not going to be the same monster he is right now. The only reason that Kane was even meta for a while this last year was because of a buff to his Q that reduced the cooldown. So, what'll end up happening is you'll probably become a little bit more of a niche pick, and you might put 3 points Q and then max W again like you did before. 
Warwick is receiving massive scaling buffs as he's felt weak these past few patches. His passive damage is going up from 8 to 42 to 12 to 44, and will now include bonus ratios, 15% of his bonus AD and 10% of his AP. Wukong Jungle has been underperforming, so his E will also deal 150% damage to monsters next patch. It's a small buff, but should hopefully make his jungle clear a little bit faster. Next up is a buff for Rengar Jungle. His W extra healing from monster damage is going up from 50% to 100%, and his W will also deal 65 to 130 bonus damage to monsters, scaling with his champion level. Echo Jungle is also getting some love, as his passive damage to monsters is receiving a huge buff, from 150% to 250%, and this will probably just help that mid lane Echo take my Raptors faster instead of having him be a jungler, but we'll see. Nidalee is also set to receive a nice set of buffs next patch as well. Her spear's minimum damage is going up from 70 to 130 plus 50% AP to 70 to 150 plus 70% AP, while the maximum damage is having its base damage increased from 210 to 390 to 210 to 450 as a result. The mana cost on her Q is also being reduced from 50 to 90 to 50 to 70, while her E's mana cost is going down from 60 to 120 to 50 to 90. Not having to pay for as much mana means you get to spam that much more. Lee Sin has not been the pick these past couple of patches, in spite of how fun he is. His base armor is going up from 33 to 36, his W cooldown is being reduced from 14 to 12, and his E's damage is being increased from 80 to 240 to 100 to 260. This is a healthy set of buffs for Lee Sin, and he really does need them. He was balanced around last season's jungle before, and modernizing him for the new one should be welcomed by all players. Next is Gragas. His passive healing is going up from 6 to 8% of his maximum health, while his W's cooldown is being decreased from 6 to 5 seconds. This should leave Gragas feeling much more durable than before, and might even encourage more tank Gragas builds. You know what? Might even see him in the top lane again. Aside from support item changes, Ivern is also receiving direct buffs. His Q cooldown is being reduced from 14 to 10 to 12 to 8, while his E's shield AP ratio increased from 80 to 90%. The E cooldown is also being reduced from 12 to 8 to 10 to 6 seconds, while Daisy's attack speed is being increased from 0.623 to 0.7. Getting several little buffs is the same as getting a one medium sized one, and we can expect Ivern to feel pretty good next patch. Karthus has been underperforming heavily, and next patch will hopefully be his chance at redemption. His Q's mana cost is being reduced from 20 to 44 to 20 to 40, and his Q's AP ratio increased from 30 to 35%. These buffs are very, very small, and it's likely he'll need some more in future patches to find his footing again. But I'm glad that Riot isn't overdoing anything, because when Karthus is good, he is really good. Talia has been in need of buffs forever, and they're finally coming next patch. Her Q will deal 100% damage to monsters after the first stone, and her Q's worked ground radius is being reduced from 450 to 375. While this is overall a net neutral change, this helps her in the jungle specifically, because she'll have more unworked ground to use, thus speeding up her clear. Massive balance changes in the jungle, there's a lot, and they were definitely necessary, because there are a few junglers who hold all the power right now. But let's talk about the mid laners next. Speaking of holding all the power, Fizz is first on the list and is receiving a nerf to his mana pool. His mana per level is being reduced from 57 to 37. He's able to use his spells a little too liberally right now, and this nerf should keep him in check in both the early and late game. He's had a little too much mana built into his kit, and players will have to be a bit more careful with him next patch. He'll still hit like a truck though, so watch out for those max range sharks, especially the ones that don't look like they're going to hit you, and they hit you anyway. Morgana mid is also a target next patch, as she's randomly been popping off with Leandri's Anguish. Her W DPS is going down from 12 to 60 to 12 to 52. Support Morgana doesn't really use W for damage, but instead for a little bit of poke and to make some extra cash on the side. Also, they usually don't max W early on in the game, so mid Morgana will take the brunt of this nerf. Next up is Annie, as her E's movement speed buff has been reduced from 30 to 60% to 20 to 50%. The loss of some mobility is going to hurt quite a bit, as Annie's engage power as well as ability to dodge ganks will end up noticeably weaker. As an already immobile champion, taking away from her only movement buff will make it a little bit harder for Annie to get to the places she wants to go. Anivia is receiving a pretty massive set of changes, so let's run through them real quick. 
Her basic attack animation is getting a big quality of life buff and should function better as its missile speed has been increased from 1500 to 1600. Next, her Q will chill enemies it passes over while the damage is being nerfed a bit. The pass through damage will be reduced from 60 to 160 plus 45% AP to 50 to 130 plus 25% AP, while the explosion damage is going up from 60 to 160 plus 45% AP to 70 to 210 plus 50% AP. Also, the cooldown is being decreased from 10 to 8 seconds to 11 to 7 seconds. The mana cost lowered from 80 to 120 to 80 to 100, and the missile speed increased from 800 to 950. Now that missile speed buff especially is a big one and should help her out against an ever-growing mobile cast of champions. Her W's length is being changed from 400 to 800 to 500 to 800, while the cooldown is being changed from a flat 17 seconds to 20 to 16 seconds. Her E's mana cost is being reduced from 50 to 90 to 40 flat and the damage is going up from 50 to 150 plus 50% AP to 60 to 180 plus 60% AP. Finally, her ultimate's cooldown is being reduced from 6 seconds to 4, 2.5, and 1 second based on ability level, and the base damage is being reduced from 40 to 80 to now being 30 to 60. Overall though, this is a buff for the bird, and I'm excited to see players pop off with her. Next, Talon's W return damage is being increased from 45 to 125 to 45 to 145. The preseason has left him a little bit lacking in terms of wave clear, and this change should make the game a little more playable for him right now. Once again, Seraphine is not being played mid, so Riot is putting their foot down and buffing her once again. Her HP per level is going up from 80 to 90, and her W will now shield Seraphine only for 50% more. This should encourage mid lane play because you'll benefit more heavily from levels, and also because the extra shield from her W will allow her to put up a better fight. Yasuo and Yone, the brothers who have been struggling together, are getting buffed as well. Their attack speed per level is being increased from 2.5% to 3.5%, so they'll hopefully scale a bit better. Don't forget that a lot of crit items did receive buffs or price reductions, so these two should also hit their power spikes faster as well. That'll wrap up the mid lane, so let's talk about bot laners next. We all know that Samira is busted, so here she is getting nerfed. Samira's passive knockup will only be usable against knocked up enemies, rather than immobilized enemies next patch. This is a big nerf for its versatility, and it's not over just yet. Her Q and R life stealing is being reduced from 100% to 66%, so she won't be able to clutch it and survive under the same strenuous circumstances as before. Her 75% ban rate would lead anyone to believe that the majority player base is happy to see her get nerfed. Aside from lethality item nerfs, Jin is also subject to a direct nerf to his Q as well. Hopefully this isn't another Kale scenario and the nerf is big enough. His Q's bonus AD ratio is being reduced from 45 to 75% to 35 to 65%. Unfortunately, my little rat friend Twitch hasn't been doing so hot. Sure, those clips of AP Twitch destroying teams can be pretty disgusting, but the statistics indicate that overall, he's kind of failing. His Q's attack speed is going up from 30 to 50% to 40 to 60%. His W's slow is being increased from 25 to 45% to now being 30 to 50%. And his R bonus AD is going up from 20 to 40 to 25 to 55. No AP Twitch buffs here, but these buffs help out Twitch regardless of what build you are going for. To wrap things up, let's talk about one last support change. Lulu is it, and she's getting buffed. This is a buff to support Lulu, which is surprising, as she's doing quite well right now. Her Q will deal 25% increased damage if a target is hit by both bolts, and the Q damage is also being changed from 80 to 200 to 70 to 210. 10 less early, 10 more later. Her Q is also having the damage fall off removed, but will deal 70% damage to minions, meaning that you guys who are planning on playing her in the solo lane might have to think twice before doing so. And that will cover all the upcoming changes for next patch. Thank you guys so much for watching. It's a ton of stuff, so stay excited. Little by little, we're working through the preseason chaos, and honestly, the game does feel a lot more fun than before. Until next time, have fun, and good luck out on Summoner's Rift. <laughs>